God, we say thank you. Thank you that you are a God who leads us to freedom. You are a God who frees us. And today, God, we thank you for the ways you've already freed us. And we also praise you because you know that each one of us has more areas of our lives to release to you. We thank you, God, for your border-free spirit that moves within each one of us. Continue to show us the ways of freedom, that we may extend that freedom and that love and that power to those around us. We praise you and we thank you. Amen. Just a few feet from this altar is our peace pole that stands at the corner of Fifth and Ridge Northwest. It stands solid, and yet it's small in comparison to many structures in our neighborhood. However, its quiet presence, conveying love and peace in multiple languages, holds its own. It, it makes a statement larger than its size. Our neighborhood is a busy neighborhood with hundreds of people passing by the peace pole every day, and many barely notice it. And yet, I received an email from one of our neighbors thanking us for the peace pole and saying that every day he pauses there for a few moments to pray for peace, for peace in our neighborhood and peace in our world. Our peace poll is one of the small ways that MCCDC is a gift to our neighbors. It may not be impressive, yet it is meaningful and it endures. Through all seasons, through the sirens, through the shouts in our neighborhood, it symbolizes the heart of our mission. In the realm of border free spirit, what seems impressive may actually be limited. And what seems small may be unlimited. In our scripture today from Mark 13, one of the disciples is impressed by the temple in Jerusalem. Impressed by this symbol of power, its majesty, its architecture. And says to Jesus, Rabbi, look at this building, look at that stonework. Jesus replied, you're impressed by this grandiose architecture? There's not a stone in the whole works that's not going to end up in a heap of rubble. As in many places in the Gospels, Jesus points beyond the appearances of power. This is Jesus who sees power in a mustard seed. This is Jesus who sees power in inviting the children to come and gather around him. This is Jesus who sees power when those around him show compassion beyond borders. In contrast to the teachings of Jesus, we so often point to power. Sometimes it seems we're so easily impressed. We live in a world of power grabs. And as R.S. James notes, we value muscle power and horsepower and atomic power, purchasing power and power over others, political power, military power, industrial power, power of the press. And not one of us wants to say, I am powerless. We advocate for power to the people and we fear power outages or losing power. Disciple in our scripture was so impressed by the power of the temple because it was at least one show of power in the midst of the overpowering rule of Rome. Rome's oppressive power was suffocating the life out of the people. Rome ruled by power of the sword. As empire, it consumed nations and peoples by force. And violence was actually at the very core of the Roman Empire. Even its entertainment was about violent power as gladiators fought to the death. And enemies of the empire were put front and center in the Roman circus as wild beasts were let loose against them. 
The institution of enslavement drove the economy of the Roman Empire. And government power struggles were marked by assassinations. The thirst of materialism drove their passions. R.S. James describes the empire as corrupt in consciousness, preoccupied with physical sensation, abusive, without a noble vision of God. It was power gone amok. And that's why Jesus is talking about true power in this scripture. It's so easy for power to become its own God. It's so easy for power to become unrestrained. It's so easy for power to be misplaced. And so Jesus is calling us to true and compassionate power. Rome ultimately collapsed, as will all empires without compassion and equality. Rome fell, as did the temple in Jerusalem. It fell in all its glory, as Jesus predicted. So Jesus taught of another temple. Jesus taught of a temple that would never fall. Jesus pointed to the disciple and points us to the eternal temple, the inner treasure, that place inside each one of us that's beyond the power struggles, that's beyond buying and selling. It's described in the Gospels as the pearl of great price. That place in each one of us that is worth the search. That place in each one of us that is the peace pole on the inside. The place inside each one of us that stands through all seasons and all times and holds true even during the most difficult circumstances. The eternal place enthroned in our souls that holds the center of power to carry us through this life. When we choose to live from this soul place from this eternal temple that will never fall, we are living in freedom. It's the border free spirit reaching all the way to our hearts and to our souls. We are free from the circumstances around us. We are free from the pressures of others. We are free from labels and expectations. We are free from the ups and downs of circumstances. Life will always bring trouble and sometimes it may seem like everything is falling down. And yet there is this place inside of us that is protected by the love of Christ. Place of spiritual centering and spiritual power. We are never powerless as we open ourselves to the movements of the Spirit 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. It may seem like everything around us is falling down. It may seem that trouble is everywhere. We may be tired of COVID-19. In fact, some are using the, terms, the term COVID fatigue. We may be feeling all of that. And yet we live with spiritual power when we go to the place inside of us. And the invitation of Jesus not only is to know that we have this living temple, but for us in our own lives to become living temples. By living temples, it means that we are taking the power inside of us and sharing that power with others around us. Living with that power of looking at circumstances in life in new ways. Thank you so much for your testimony today, Daniel, because that's exactly what we're talking about here. That place inside that reminds us that God has placed us where we are to make a positive difference. You potentially saved someone's life. It happens sometimes in big ways. It happens often in small ways. R.S. James says power is neutral, but the use of power is not. That which furnishes the heart with meaning determines how we will use the power that is ours. We have eternal spiritual power inside of us. That place of the soul, that seat of the soul, that living temple 
that invites us to be living temples. So the question is, how do we continue to furnish our hearts with meaning? How do we continue to build that inner temple? How do we build the temple of our souls that will never fall? How do we become free to live with spiritual power? In our scripture today from 1 Samuel 2, 1 through 2, Hannah was a person who at different points in her life felt powerless. She felt at times powerless towards a system that was patriarchal. She continued to pray, however, for God to be indwelling within her and through her. In our scripture today, she furnished her heart with spiritual power, rejoicing, coming from a place of strength. She prays, my heart rejoices in the Lord, my strength, my strength rises up to the Lord. I rejoice, O God, in your deliverance, for no one is holy like the Lord, no one except you. There is no rock like our God. We begin our worship service today with our God is an awesome God. When we praise, when we sing, we touch the power of God, and that power of God begins to live through us and in us. Praise releases power. Rejoicing releases power. When we praise God, our strength rises up. It was true for Hannah, and it is true for us as we praise God for the movement of God in our lives. We're invited to furnish our hearts with intention on protecting the heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for your heart determines the course of your life. Part of the invitation every day is to continue to protect that place in us from that which would draw us away from the center and the core of our life. There is so much that seeks to pull us away from what really matters. We live in a world that so oftentimes trivializes that which is most meaningful, a world of distraction. The invitation is each day to continue to ask God to strengthen our hearts and to protect our hearts from that which would pull us away, from the ego, which oftentimes tries to exert its power in our daily choices. Our power to bring peace and love into the world may never create an impressive headline, yet this power is the embodiment of transformation. It is the seemingly small shows of power that ultimately change the world. I'll never forget one Sunday here at MCCDC when one of our members showed up wearing only socks. I, I said, where are your shoes? As it turned out, this member of MCCDC on the way to church saw somebody without shoes. She noticed that her feet were about the size of the person without shoes and without even thinking about it, it just came from her heart. She gave her shoes to one of our neighbors. That was an incredible act of power, an act of love, generosity. It speaks to the power of giving, the power of living our lives. This week, I was so blessed that one of the emails that came my way was one of our members who once again is reaching out to neighbors and friends to bring together share cards and gift cards to local grocery stores to share. A simple thing, reaching out to a neighbor, neighbors reaching out to her, then following up in ways that can make a difference. There is power when we extend compassion and love and grace to each other, when we listen to the inner voice of love that invites us to do small things that make an amazing big difference. In worship, we touch the power of our awesome God, and then that awesomeness comes through us. We use our power for peace. Peace easily overlooked in the rush of life is one of the greatest of spiritual powers. Compassion is one of the greatest of spiritual powers. Opening ourselves and listening to each other is one of the greatest spiritual powers. These powers will never fall because these powers are the power of the awesome God living in us and through us. Our invitation is to be living temples. 
bringing this love and this grace and this peace to the world through border-free spirit, free to live and love and serve with God's amazing power. Amen.